the Agile brand. Welcome to Season 6 of the Agile Brand, where we discuss marketing technology and customer experience trends, insights, and ideas with enterprise and technology platform leaders. We focus on the people, processes, data, and platforms that make brands successful, scalable, customer-focused, and sustainable. This is what makes an Agile brand. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom, advising Fortune 1000 brands on MarTech, marketing operations, and CX, best-selling author and speaker. The Agile Brand Podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full-stack technology services, talent services, and real-world application. For more information, go to teksystems.com. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that my latest book, Priority is Action, Seven Principles for Better Strategies, Decisions, and Outcomes, is now available. In it, I give ideas and insights for leaders and teams that need to make meaningful progress on their priorities. After all, our priorities are what we do, not what we say we'd like to do. You can find Priority is Action on Amazon or learn more on my website, gregkillstrom.com. Now let's get on to the show. Artificial intelligence has become a pivotal tool for organizations seeking to enhance their marketing strategies and their operational efficiency, yet adopting AI effectively presents a series of challenges as well as opportunities. Today, we're going to explore how organizations can optimally set up their data operations for AI, the implications of the maturity gap in AI adoption, and envisioning a future that involves a collaboration of sorts between AI and the human touch in sales and marketing. To navigate these topics, I'd like to welcome Eric Madriaga, co-founder of CData. Eric, welcome to the show. Thanks, Greg. Uh, excited to be here today. Yeah, looking forward to talking about this topic with you. So why don't we get started with you talking about your role at CData and a little bit about what CData does, does for those uh, less familiar. Sure, be happy to. So I'm, I'm one of the co-founders here at CData Software, uh, ran marketing for the organization, up until 2023 and kind of uh, shifted into kind of a strategy and an advisory position of the marketing team. As a business, CData really lives in the data integration space. We develop the world's most comprehensive platform for data connectivity, uh, for real-time data access. So we focus on standards-based connectivity, which essentially means that we take all the applications and databases and files and APIs and other systems and make them all look and speak the same language, um, essentially transact SQL. Uh, so as a result, we make it super easy to connect any application or tool, including AI processes with live data from just about anywhere. Great, great. Well, yeah, so let's let's dive in here. And we're gonna, first, we're going to start about, uh, we're going to start by talking about setting up data operations for AI and, and marketing. So for those organizations, looking to use AI and use it more effectively in their marketing, the foundation of effective data operations is critical, as, as many of you probably know. We're going to discuss some of the key components here. So let's get started with, you know, what, in, in your view, what are the critical steps that organizations need to take to ensure their data operations are properly set up to adopt AI and marketing effectively? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I think the number one thing, and this is kind of obvious, I think with most undertakings really to define a, a clear goal, AI can improve a lot of processes, but you, you need to be very clear uh, with, with what you want it to do. You know, the marketing side of things, are you looking to improve forecasting, lead conversion, improve retention, support self-service? You know, what is it that you're looking to augment your current marketing operations with in order to, uh, you know, to, to, to really take advantage of those AI technologies. Second to that, I'd say that you really need to make all of your data, as much of it as humanly possible, available for consumption. So AI technologies are extremely good at pattern recognition, but in order for them to really work their magic, they need to be able to operate on data from a diverse set of systems. Now, in the industry, a lot of businesses are turning to data warehousing or data lake house implementations and consolidating, that's not necessarily required. You don't necessarily need a huge uh, IT implementation to, to get started and get working with AI. So I can give you an example. Yeah. Um, we, we implemented a kind of an AI driven customer health system uh, internally. So it, it was designed to identify customers of ours that might be at risk. In order to make that work, we obviously need to get information and data from our CRM system. 
Uh, so their, their type, their history, account data, demographics, all those things, as well as connectivity with our support systems. Have customers been engaging with our, our support team? Have they been happy, unhappy? What's the send that look like? As well as integration with internal databases for customer usage and telemetry. So all of that data, data connectivity was required in order for these AI models to build, maintain, grow, and work in order to tell us if you know a customer may be more likely to try. Yeah, yeah. and so in, in in that example, you know, which, which parts are, you know, what what is C Data's role exactly in that, and how you know how do you partner with internal teams? Then you know, what is, what does that relationship look like? Yeah, so absolutely. So it's it's very straightforward. Um, so and as I mentioned from 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 C Data's perspective, we simplify data connectivity. So we make everything in your organization, your CRM system, your IP system, your databases, your, your flat files, all those things speak the same language, which is basically structuring those systems for consumption by AI. That's, that's one common usage. Um, I'll give you an example for that as well. We have a, a product called CDN Connect Cloud. And um, Connect, Connect Cloud is a consolidated SaaS-based connectivity solution uh, that uses our connectivity technologies internally to um, to connect all your your different systems and things. Right. Yeah. The benefit to that is is that um, you have one platform to to use, and we were able to layer AI technology on top of that and implement things like text to SQL interfaces. So that allows customers to ask questions of their data. You know, give me uh, how my my North American performance is is. You know, over the past six months for sales, right? So you can ask those text those those questions in text, and it translates that into SQL, goes query Salesforce, goes query some other CRM system, and returns that data. So by having a, a common uh, interface, a common language for all these systems, it really sets you up for success on the AI implementation side. And so. Let's talk then about you know some of the some of the challenges facing organizations. Obviously, you know it's it's hard to escape conversations about AI, and a lot of organizations want to adopt it more in in, in beneficial ways. But you know, as it's transforming a lot of how marketers work, there there is a divide emer emerging between companies that are you know let's say they're leading in AI adoption and those that that are struggling to keep. Pace. So, from your perspective, where do most organizations require the most assistance in adopting AI, and you know what what are some of the common challenges that they're facing? Yeah, it's another good question. So, let let me start out by saying that as long as you have a good ops team, I think uh, AI is, is pretty easy to get started with. Hmm. Uh, we're very fortunate to have some you know, brilliant sales, marketing, operations team members here that have made you know, integration relatively painless. There are tons of solutions on the market that will do things like embed predictive capabilities in your marketing processes, uh, things like Salesforce Einstein or, or Sixth Sense that are looking at intent data, uh, looking at, at patterns to provide scores and things like that. I think one of the biggest barriers for adoption is really validating the outputs of AI across your business. So mm -hmm. what I mean like by that is, you know, let's take, take for example, at Salesforce Einstein or Sixth Sense. They evolve and they're, they're built on models that train themselves over time. And they essentially give you a, a predictive score, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, but but how and when do you trust uh, the, the thresholding of that predictive score? If you're trying to, to build a, a, an MQL model where you, you decide you know, that a lead is a good lead, you know, how I know when when the, uh, the predictive model is good and is actually you know, giving me the right insight about a, a lead, right? You know, Sixth Sense, for example, is a self-training model it takes you know cues from customer touch points that are all over the place, right? All, all kinds of different systems, all kinds of different touch points. So anyway, I mean, your, your data systems internally really need to be set up so that you can validate, you know, the, the outputs of AI and continually test, you know, side by side, validating its historic data before trusting the outputs. So I think it, it requires a certain maturity uh, to really be successful there. Yeah, and along those lines, then you know, to talk about the 
maturity gap? I mean, do you see or do you, you know, do you believe that there is a, a growing maturity gap between those leaders and the laggards in, in AI adoption? And is this something that is temporary? Do you see it widening over time? And if so, you know, what, what implications might that have for the industry? Sure. Uh, so, you know, I, I David, this is by saying I'm not an analyst or industry expert. Yeah, I've been sure. with CDANA uh, since 2014, since inception. Uh, so we have a, a very you know, specific view of the industry. Uh, but I, I think there's a definitely a, a growing maturity gap between leaders and laggards. I mean, I read a McKenzie study uh, some time ago uh, that said that those companies, you know, that have built out leading AI capabilities are outperforming you know, the, the lagger, it's by like two to six times or, or something like that. So, I mean, I think that kind of performance has a lot of marketing teams scrambling to learn how they can best incorporate AI technologies into their, their processes. That, that performance is kind of undeniable. You know, as these organizations are, are understanding these benefits, it, it definitely leads to, to challenges. So in the industry today, and there's obviously talent scarcity, there's issues with integration complexity internally. And then, you know, of course, you know, challenges with IT and adoption of AI in terms of, you know, privacy and that the, the, the data that, you know, how much of that are we exposing to AI and what are the implications of, of doing that, right? So, I mean, all those things are kind of barriers that you need to, to overcome you know, in the process, but, you know, performance is, is there. Um, people are, are going to continue that adoption and move forward. Yeah, yeah. And so last topic I wanted to talk about with you is, you know, I think in the early days of the the recent AI boom, I think there was a lot of talk about, you know, AI is going to replace all our jobs and, uh, you know, all sort of like doom and gloom. And, you know, I, I think some of that is, has subsided. Doesn't mean that AI is not going to replace parts of our jobs. I think that's been pretty widely documented and forecasted and, and so on and so forth. But, you know, I think the more realistic view is, yes, if some jobs may be changed and or replaced, but mostly it's going to be a combination of humans working with AI uh, almost collaboratively, or you could think of it as, as teams or, or however you want to, however you want to couch it. First, I mean, do you agree with this, you know, the, the scenario and, you know, how do you envision the role of AI and human personalization evolving in sales and marketing specifically? You know, is, is this hybrid approach the future? I mean, I think that that's exactly right. I mean, AI will continue to evolve and play a bigger, bigger role in sales and marketing, but I think humans are, are safe for now. At least. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> the, the focus really shouldn't be to replace people but to, to kind of develop AI empowered sales and marketing people and teams, right? You know, AI excels at, at automating repetitive tasks and personalizing experience and experiences at scale, predicting outcomes based on large data sets, but it, it still falls short in terms of, of the human touch, uh, which I think is really critical for businesses and customers and, and connectivity with brand. You know, uh, those things are influenced so much by you know, individuals and people. I don't think you can remove that element from the sales and marketing process. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so so along those lines, I mean, can you, having worked with a lot of companies as you have, you know, can you share some examples or maybe some insights on how are organizations doing this well now, you know, in this, this kind of collaboration between AI and, and humans and how might they do some of this uh, more in the future as well. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, there, there's dozens of ways this can be kind of implemented successfully. You know, I think that the I don't know if it's the easiest, but but a very common uh, path is that you know AI empowered uh, customer insights for your sales team, right? So giving you know sales folks the ability to get insights from data and, and provide that to them in real time, so that they can be better at at doing their job. Um, the, you know, I think there are huge benefits here for businesses like our own, or where we have kind of a highly technical products or very complex going market processes. Being able to augment sales teams with these kind of tools, you know, can help them do a lot more without having to ingest, you know, all of the different variations of of ways that a product can be sold or uh, of ways that we're you know integrating and talking to customers, right? So I, mean, I think it's it, it's kind of a 
you know, something that can can live alongside of the sales team and, and help with that process. Beyond that, you know, there's there's uh, AI driven AB testing and optimization, right? So you can you can use AI to to test marketing messages and content variations and things. But ultimately, it requires kind of a, a marketing team to look at that the data that comes out of those tests and evaluate what kind of campaigns and things you want to run moving forward to align everything still to you know your your company goals. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, Eric. Thanks so much for joining us here. Uh, one last question before we wrap up. Looking, you know, looking ahead, whether that's months or, or years down the road, uh, you know, you certainly mentioned and gave a lot of great ideas of how AI and, and marketing and sales can be combined today and even into the future. But what should companies be thinking about, you know, how, what should their mindset be and what should they be focusing on so that not only they, they capitalize on some of those available opportunities, but to make sure they're remaining competitive and effective in this changing landscape, as well as staying ahead of that potential maturity gap. Yeah. Well, great. You know, th- thanks again for, for having me as a guest today. I've really enjoyed the opportunity to spend time with you and kind of dig into some of technology has been great. Yeah. Um, in terms of the future, you know, I, the more towards AI adoption is, is really unavoidable. Uh, you know, at this point, as I mentioned, I think the benefits have really improving up market for businesses that are just starting with AI. Technology has never been more approachable than it is today. Um, identify a pain point in your marketing, like uh, you know, improving lead conversion or retention, or or you know, or what have you. Adopt a solution, test, and continue to iterate. Even at a small scale, AI can make a, a huge impact on your your marketing performance. For more established leaders, look for opportunities to connect additional systems and data to AI. You know, the more data that you can feed those those AI models, the more accurate and powerful they become. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think I think that you know that's a good uh, basis for a path forward. Love it. That's great. Well, again, I'd like to thank Eric Madriaga, co-founder of C Data, for joining the show. You can learn more about Eric and C Data by following the links in the show notes. Thanks again for listening to The Agile Brand, brought to you by Tech Systems. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can access more episodes of the show at www.gregkilstrom.com. That's G-R-E-G-K-I-H-L-S-T-R-O-M.com. While you're there, check out my series of best-selling Agile Brand guides, covering a wide variety of marketing technology topics, or you can search for Greg Kilstrom on Amazon. The Agile brand is produced by Missing Link, a Latina-owned, strategy-driven, creatively-fueled production co-op. From ideation to creation, they craft human connections through intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Until next time, stay agile. The Agile brand.